I welcome you here on behalf of the Gubby Gubby Nation people. This is Gubby Land that you're on here. And I hope that tonight, while you're here, that you'll feel the presence of our ancestors. Who care for this land, who look after us. I want to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, our ancestors. What we're here to do is try and begin a relationship and begin talks and, and start talking about the river and, and why it's important to Cubby Cubby people, both historically and now. Um, we'd love to talk about some of the sites and places along the river that are important. Um, we'd love to talk about some of the species, uh, fish and turtles and things that live inside the river as well, um, and how they all connect together and how I think we can um, use those discussions to, to manage the river uh, a little bit better than what we have in the past. I think we can all acknowledge a couple of things and that you know the, the way that the river's been managed in the recent past has not been ideal. I think as a result of that, we realize that we need to start talking to the traditional owners of the land uh, to get better outcomes for not only the species, but also recognize the, the potential social healing and, and, and healing some of that issues that have been in the past and that comes through us being here together today and also then passing that on to younger generations. So I guess with with the water plan it, it's it came out in 2006 so it's a very old plan and things have changed a lot in that 15 years and perhaps the, the, the most important change for us here tonight and, and why we're here is now when we when we rewrite new water plans it's a it's a real opportunity now that we together and talking is to talk about how the new water plan can have greater um, acknowledgement and respect as tom said towards cultural values and cultural uh, connections to, to the to the uh, river system and the landscapes i felt somebody had to look after this section of river and uh... It, it's been used for sand and gravel in the past. It's been used for um, excessive cattle growing. And so we've done the lunatic thing of not having cattle. And I think everyone around here thinks we're absolutely crazy, but we're just really trying to give the land a bit of a, a, bit of a break. And um, I sort of feel in my limited time of walking on this country, I can, I can just get a, a little inkling of what what you people mean when you talk about connecting with country and being on country. Since conversations with uh, officers from the Department of Water, it gave us an opportunity to, to um, set up um, a meeting with our group, the Kabi Kabi people, to talk about our values and what is important on the Mary River and in the Mary River catchment. You've got to always have that two-way learning with traditional owners and scientific sort of people that know, we, we both learn off each other. There are certain points along our creeks uh, that are highly significant to certain family groups and certain family members. Um, Obi Obi Creek is very special. You know, people have got to realise that we're made up of water and that's how our old people thought about things too. It wasn't just about consuming it or using it in them different ways, it was about spirituality thing too. Our rivers here, one of the animals that are highly significant to my family and to me is, is the Mary River Turtle. And we were asked to protect that and protect it during its nesting season. They all have storylines and the animals have stories that we, we talk about, you know. Even the bottle brushes that grow along 
the creek banks are an indicator that tells our people that's been passed on that when you see them in flower, those bottle brushes are, are the time to catch turtle and eat turtle. Also that the bottle brushes indicate that it's the right time to eat um, eels. A lot of the claim group do recognize that Dala, the lungfish, is, is, is very uh, special animal. When I was growing up, it's very significant to us, the platypus. We never hunted that or never gathered that for food or anything. It's very special, the platypus, to our, to our people. I don't know, when I'm looking at that bank, I picture the water being higher back in the day. You know, like we weren't here before colonialism come in and what we see today, but the water looks like it was higher. And when you look around the bend, you can see the current, how it's torn into the rock. And, and just even that is important. Everything is important. You know, but we need to look at this with a different lens. Just certain weeds, invasive spe species, has a real impact on quality of water and what lives in it. There's all this grass here, this interior grass, it's all been here because of people's farming and stuff to bring in for cattle feed and that. So we need to be a part of that land management and try and get the country back how it was. And to do that, we need to be combining with different government agencies to um, make it successful. Uh, any environmental issues, any marine issues, any dieback on our native plants, um, any threat to our species, our native species, we'd like to be notified, we'd like to be a part of that planning process, how we manage that and how we get that life back into our water systems. Because we live here, this is part of us, this is who we are. I'm just glad uh, that we do have this great opportunity today to build that relationship between us and the department for better management of the Mary River, the Mary River catchment for future generations. With any sort of relationship you need to build an engagement principles and model and it's sort of like meeting Thomas is one of those special moments. He's um, from Chile he has a relationship to their bunya tree that's similar to our bunya tree and uh, that, that connection right at the start and you build that alliance to, with each other. It's, it's a bad time. It's a bad time and I hope we can have more to do with the waterways and all that and come together and work as one.